DCA, our dollar cost averaging, can have its pitfalls. And there's a lot of things to really take into consideration. And today I want to break it down what some of my fears and risks are uh, with dollar cost averaging and hopefully how you can avoid these same pitfalls that I went through. So first things first, um, on this channel, as you may know, I like to just dollar cost average. There's another, another term called value cost averaging, where instead of doing it uh, daily or weekly, you just take a base amount or a chunk of whatever you have and then break it up into two or three, maybe up to six pieces and just go uh, across a time continuum. I don't really use that uh, that well because this is not the, the way that I like to do things. But with this one, if you want to take a look at uh, how dollar cost averaging and the crypto and digital asset market has done, there's no better website than dca-cc.com. And I've talked about this, this uh, website quite a bit, and I linked it in uh, the description so you can check it out. And you can take a look and you can DCA very simply, and you can pick the top 20 uh, and you can take a look at over, you know, any time period that you want to, and you can put it in from, if you want to do like a, how much your weekly, your investment is, it could be a hundred dollars. It could be a thousand dollars. It could be $10,000 a week. You can uh, pick a bi-weekly or monthly or whatever else. And, uh, uh, it's, it's a really good tool just to see how things will work out. And what I took a look at is when I put together this, this little, uh, data points on a slideshow. I showed you mostly the good stuff, but I didn't really break into the bad part of dollar cost averaging. And I want to do that today just to get everybody up to speed and then they can make their decision as time goes on. So I'm going to take a look at, we're going to take a look at Bitcoin. We're going to take a look at Ethereum. We're going to take a look at Cardano. We're going to take a look at Chainlink and unfortunately Dash and Rect. <laughs> Excuse me, Dash and Salt. Salty get wrecked. So first things first, if you started, and everything's going to be the same to keep things just straight, easy, logical. So if you invested $100 per week and you started in 2018, January 1st, 2018, of course, after we hit the top on uh, December 17th, 2017, and you would have sold at the very top. And if you would have invested again, $100 a week, every week for all this time frame you would have been up 7X. You would have invested $20,000 roughly, and you would have 146,000 in. Okay. And these are the things that we've talked about multiple times. So this, is, this shouldn't be, if you're new to the channel, welcome. But uh, if you've been here a while, you know this is just old news. Again, same thing. If you go in 2019, it's only a six and a half X. So I think there's less risk. And uh, you, know, you will have uh, better, not better gains, but uh, not as risky gains. You would have put in 15,000 at 100,000 as far as a profit if you would have hit the top, which let's be honest, you're not going to. Or maybe you will, who knows. And if it went in 2020, you've been in 4X. Of course, in 2020, that is the year of the halving. We are just about to come up to another halving in 2024. So if you are here right now, I personally believe you're here in the right place at the right time. And of course, if you would have gone into the bull run year, and invested $100 per week on January 1st, 2021, and you would have hit the top, and I mean timed it perfectly, you're only up 1.5x. So this is how DCA works out pretty well. However, there is a flip side to this. And the flip side is if you get so ingrained into the dollar cost averaging where you're just like, okay, I got to get in there. I'm going to dollar cost average. I'm going to buy the dip, buy the dip, buy the dip. And you wait and you say, you know what? Uh, I just don't want to sell at any point. Again, there are some rules underneath me. And those rules are very simple. There's five rules. It's all gone. I Meaning don't invest more you can afford to lose. Everything's a scam until proven otherwise. Don't leave anything on exchanges. Don't use leverage and take profits along the way because nobody ever went broke taking profits, right? So again, some people are like, I'm going to diamond hands forever. Michael Saylor is one of those guys. And we'll talk about that in a second. But if you would have dollar cost average from January 1st, 2018, and never sold a dime for five years, you'd only be up 2.7 X as of June 26, 2023. So of course today's July 3rd, eh, it's about the same price wise. You only up 2.7 X. So I think the problem with dollar cost averaging, and this is what I ran into is that you never take profits. Now, some of you can say, Rob, I'm never taking profits because this is going to go to my grandkids. I'm going to have it uh, for my family and I'm just going to live, be there forever. And of course, Bitcoin's going to a million because that's what people tell me. 
Maybe it does. I don't know. But for me personally, I'm not sure that uh, we'll live in a society where everything is going to be valued into Bitcoin. I could be wrong. But if I'm not, I'm going to diversify and hedge my bet. So back to this little piece here. Let's take a look at how you do with Cardano. Again, $100 a week, you would have 16x if you would hit the top. Uh, in 2019, you would have actually done better. You would have had a 17x. Again, the year after the all-time high is a just a big dip year. It's just a big uh, falling, falling candle year. So in 2018, it's like you're pretty much just dollar cost averaging down, down, down. And if you just would have waited till the next year, we'd actually just had less risk and actually would have done better, a 17x. And then again, 2020, 11x, the year of the halving. 2021, you only would have doubled if you would have hit the top. And again, if you would have held for five years, you would have 5x for Ethereum, which I got to tell you is actually not too bad if you consider what the returns are on the S&P 500. NASDAQ, you're looking at 7 to 9% annually, year over year. So still not a bad framework, but not what it could have been if we would have actually taken a look at some of the indicators. Cardano, same thing. 35x, if you would invest in January 1st, 2018, a 39x in the reset years, uh, to only a 26x and a 3x. And if you, would have, <laughs> if you would have held this whole time, you're only up 2.5x for five years. Now we look at Cardano, or excuse me, Chainlink. You would have been up 61x on January 1st, 2018. Again, you may see a pattern here, which is the lower you go down on the rung of, uh, of the different altcoin markets, the riskier things become, but the more gains you could potentially have. But how many of these top 10 are still on top 10? So just think about that. So Chainlink 2018, again, even if you missed, and I want to say this again, even if you missed the top and you don't really like, ah, oh, I missed this because I can't sell the top because it's very difficult. Even if you missed the top, and invest in January 1st and got down here in 2021, you still would have been up 37X. So just something to think about if you're like, well, I want a diamond hands. You can do that as long as you miss some things. 2019, 28X, 20 only an 8X, the bull run year, 1.5X. And <clears throat> again, if you would have gone through from 2018, you'd be up 5X in five years. Again, not too bad. And then of course, a dash assault. Just remember that not everything's coming back. Dash, if you still own it, congratulations. You're up like 3x in five years. Eh, I guess not bad. And then dash of salt. Or salt itself, you'd be wrecked. So that's what we take a look at. And this all comes down to and it's predicated on the four year cycles, which we talked about in, at an ad nauseum for quite some time. Having all time I dip resets having all-time high dip reset happening in 2016, 2019. We're going through it again, having all-time high dip. Did we not see a massive dip in 2022? Now we're in a reset year, back to 30,000 for Bitcoin, yay. And who knows what will happen in the future. But the thing is, you have to remember is this. There's downfalls of DCA, and there's also downfalls to this, this four-year time frame. Because what if I'm wrong? What if we're wrong? What if this doesn't actually happen? All models are wrong and some are useful so there's a video i want everybody to check out a gentleman by the name of bob lucas and i linked his video in the description he's one of those guys that actually was pretty accurate calling tops last cycle and in this video he made it very simple he's like look after after we have you know the halving we got so many weeks until we hit an all-time high around 35, and then of course we hit an all time, we hit a, a massive low for the cycle 47 weeks after. And then it happened, uh, happened again in 2021, 35 weeks and then 49 weeks. So in this video, you would think him just to say, well, it's gonna happen again, 35 and 49 or 48 or whatever else it is. But he says, no, he goes for this one, he talks about how 2024 might be the actual all time high. And if that is the truth, and we won't know until we get there. Let's be honest. I mean, something could come out where, you know, Gary Gensler gets fired and all these ETFs get approved. And I'm not super convinced that, ET, that these spot ETFs are going to be fantastic for the market anyhow. And I'm still not convinced that it's actually going to go through. But let's say some other thing happens and uh, we see central banks pick up Bitcoin. 
And uh, they're actually on the balance sheet, just like gold. Before you know it, all this becomes irrelevant. So you have to really stay up to date with the market. However, it's just something good to take a look at and to challenge the idea of the four-year cycles. Because the problem is, is that investing, there's a lot of dogma, especially in, in, in crypto and the digital asset space. People are like, this is it. This is the only way. This is how it goes. And I think we get too caught up into it. So I just want to make sure everybody has another side to this so they can do their due diligence and move forward. So what do we do? How do we make sure as time goes on that we don't screw this up and we're not one of those people that diamond hands forever and we get dash or salts and we're you know wrecked and just holding things and buying dips forever and we don't take a little bit of funds out to, I don't know, pay our credit card bills or pay off our house or you know get out of debt or actually get into other assets that might diversify a little bit. I know Michael Saylor will say all day long that, you know, it's the best thing ever and that's all you should own. I'm pretty sure he owns other assets. I'm just going to guess. Anyhow, this is what I try to do. I try to take a look at different uh, sites that will help me. And, of course, Ben's is really good, uh, you know, into the cryptoverse. Uh, there's a link in the description. You get a month off. But... What I like about this is you can go through all these, these metrics. What I like about this really a lot is this. It's got, it, it lays it all out. Price, on-chain metrics, social, and a summary. And you can take a look at all these like um, market value versus realized value, Z-score, quill multiple, minor cap, transaction fees, terminal price, and a bunch of other ones. And you can take a look at all those things. Or you can just look at here and go, okay, well, on-chain analysis, uh, right, pretty good. This might be a time to actually get into Bitcoin and, and uh, the crypto market. Social metrics, same thing. YouTube subscribers, YouTube views, price metrics, Bitcoin risk, and just kind of lays it all out, right? And that's just one piece of the puzzle. You can't just look at this and go, okay, this is it. I'm just going to use that. It's like when people tell me, Rob, I only use greed and fear index to buy and sell. Well, if you look at the greed and fear index, you missed out on a ton of gains when people went into extra greedy territory. I'm just saying, you can, you can take a look at fear and greed index. We've talked about this ad nauseum. I'm not going to do it again. But there's a lot of things we should take a look at. One of those big things I take a look at is this, the time and risk bands. And before I'm a member too, I know people are like, Rob, stop showing this stuff because you're giving away all the secrets. And I pay for this every month. And why are you showing this stuff? Calm down. I'm just going to show everybody this time and risk bands, what they should be taking a look at. Because this, this makes sense to explain it, but you're going to need to take a look at this on like at least a weekly basis to see where the heck things are, what I'm talking about. So this time and risk, man, there are certain days, and you can take a look at, and it goes by total market cap. It looks by altcoin market cap, Bitcoin, Ethereum, ADA, which is doing fantastic in the ecosystem. Congratulations for all those holders. BNB, Sol, and Link. And it takes a look at just this, this time and risk, band, or when it actually is in these price points throughout their entire roughly their entire existence. So we're going to take a look at Bitcoin real quick. And to make this, you know, very simple, like, what is this? So I broke it down. That same, this, this four-year cycle, risk bands, you can find the link to this presentation in the description. It's at the very bottom. And what I did was I added in this thing. The time and risk bands are what I do. So what you're taking a look at right now, let's see, Bitcoin is currently in the 0 0.5 to 0 0.6 risk band, which is right over here, which is, we're heating up, quite honestly. So what I take a look at is this. Everything starts with, my, with the highest day point, whether that be Bitcoin or Ethereum or whatever else. And I just take a look at this and go, okay, this is my baseline. This is my base level. And for all these time points, I mean, Bitcoin is in the 0 0.3 to 0 0.4, low risk, for roughly 1,143 days for its, roughly its existence. And then the price point as it gets increases, 0 0.4, it's only in for 913 days. 0 0.5 to 0 0.6, 485, 0 0.6. And you can see as things heat up, like this risk band of 0 0.9 to 1.0, it's only been there 18 days. That might be a good idea to sell. I'm not telling you what to do, not your dad. Or over here, it's in this 0 0.0 to 0 0.1, 134 days. Might be a good time to buy. So how do you do this? 
Well, I just do what's called dynamic DCA. So I start here. I'm just going to give you just a simple example. So here is 0 0.00. Let's say I buy Bitcoin for 100 bucks a week. Or maybe you buy 20 bucks a week. Or maybe you're a baller and you say, you know what? $10,000 a week, Rob. Because that's how I roll. Great. Have fun. But let's just give it round numbers. I'm not that smart. So I need to stick with round numbers. So 100 bucks a week and 0 0.00. Okay. Got it. Right? So every week, if it's in this band, I'm spending 100 bucks a week buying Bitcoin. Dollar cost averaging, it executes on Coinbase. I have it already set up. Now then, I'm checking it every so often. And let's say it goes to the band of 0 0.2 to 0 0.3. So it's getting less risky. The price of Bitcoin is going down. So maybe I want to increase that by 25%. And I'm going to buy 125 bucks a week or... Let's say it gets a little bit more risky. And I say, you know what? I want to decrease that by $75 a week because I want to wait for stuff over here. So you see how it's balanced? I try to balance them as best I can. And some people say, Rob, that's stupid. I'm just going to buy 100 bucks a week all the way through. Have fun. Go at it. Your goals are not my goals. And that could work really well for you, quite honestly. This is how I do things. And it's, and it's up to you to decide what works for you. Now, let's say we go on these crazy risk bands. 0 0.1 to 0 0.2, I'm like, you know what? Here's my base of 100 bucks a week from here. I want to go up 50%. I'm going to go 150 bucks a week. Or let's say it starts to, starts to decrease, or sorry, increase and heat up. 0 0.1, now I'm going to pay only 50 bucks a week. And then let's say it goes real crazy. Let's say, like we just had recently, gosh, when was it, last November? I guess it wasn't that recently. Okay, forgive me. You're in that 0 0.001 level and you're at uh, roughly $15,936, whatever else it was. We have the cycle low. That might be a good time to really go in heavy or heavier. And you want to go, you want to double 200 bucks a week. But let's say it goes over here and you're at 0 0.6 to 0 0.7. Maybe you want to think about selling a little because there's going to be opportunities over here. It doesn't just go up into the right forever. It doesn't do that. It can't do that. Nothing does that. So maybe you want to think about selling a little bit and then you get over here. You're like, man, I got to really sell. So that is just the things that I do to help uh, me not buy all the time and take some profits and maybe roll things into other assets and uh, opportunities that I see fit. So it's just, up to, it's just up to what you want to do. And I will say this. If you're looking for more indicators or things that I'm looking for myself, there's a link in the description. It's in every one of my videos now. And it says why and when I'm selling 80% of my crypto. You can click on that and I go over everything I talk about. And there's another one that's super important, I feel. It's called don't make these crypto mistakes. These are all my screw ups that I've learned so far over 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, geez, Louise, seven years of been being in crypto. So just you, you have to learn from mistakes. There's not to be your mistakes. So watch that video as well. And if you don't want to search for all these things, there's this website. It's called Dan Teaches Crypto, and it's 100% free. I made it for you guys, so you don't have to hunt and look around for everything. So in module three, there's a bunch of different modules. I've got uh, reviews, how to do your own research, how do you, you know, how do you do stuff using a MetaMask wallet, to get your taxes, how do you stake theta, blah, 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 blah. So all those things. But in module three, Investing. There's Chewy. Man, I miss Chewy. I go over some the golden rules. This is the one where we talk about all my screw-ups, like lessons for investing. For your cycle, have a plan. And there's the video itself and a bunch of other stuff over there. So check that out either way you want to. That's it. And then lastly, I will just say uh, we had... Uh, Kevin Maloney, he was the CEO of iTrust yesterday because there's been a lot of uproar about uh, Prime Trust and Fortress and iTrust. So I brought him on to explain exactly what was happening. Don't sound off unless you've watched the video. I think it was pretty interesting. And then also for everybody who is beating the drum on the uh, uh, self-custody for IRAs, I need you to read this short piece from a law group where people were self-custodying certain 
uh, commodities and they were deemed not relevant and had to pay a bunch of fees. So check that out, link in the description. And that is it for today. So look, uh, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. This isn't a set it and forget it as we just talked about quite clearly. But uh, that is it for that piece. Now, if you wanna stick around, I'll answer all your questions the best of my abilities and we'll chat and you can, we can go from there. But if not, go enjoy Sunday. I know I'm going to myself, but uh, let's get into the questions and uh, see what you guys have. Bop, 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 bop. Klaus is, uh, I'm starting to get the bull tingles, excitement is coming. It's true, excitement is coming. I think the thing that really kicked it off was